Hey guys, uh, my name is Harris. Uh, I work for a company called Daily Burn. Uh, we're actually right by here um, in the Frank Gehry building, right across Chelsea Piers. If you're visiting town, uh, you should go check it out. Frank Gehry is an awesome architect, and it's a great building and piece of art, just to uh, at least check out from the outside even. But uh, yeah, I work at Daily Burn, um, do pretty much a lot there. But I also do stuff like this, a lot of hackathons, a lot of competitions, a lot of times where I'm just spending more time doing code. And I built this app with one of my colleagues. Uh, he did the iOS part, I did the back end. It was essentially doing face recognition and de detection and recognition, hooking with Facebook and in a Terminator-like interface. So he's the iOS developer. I was a back end. I was like, you know what? Face recognition and detection is awesome, but damn it, I want to do it in Ruby. And I've been playing with Mac Ruby for almost two years now. A lot of toy apps, a lot of things that I'm hoping to push soon in the Mac App Store. And I was like, you know what, let's try to do, I, I want to I get people excited about writing desktop apps again, because it's actually a lot of fun. And you can be a little sloppy. You have, you know, four gigs of RAM and, you know, I don't know, a terabyte of hard drive, solid state. So, you know, you can be a little lazy. Um, but, yeah, so MacRuby is a full-on implementation of 1.9. Uh, it uses the LLVM uh, compiler. It was actually the first Ruby implementation, uh, other than Ruby 1.9, to use, to be on 1.9, so before Rubinius. And uh, JRuby now, is, I think, is working on it or might have a branch. So they, they made the switch really, really early on. Um, it was initially supported by Apple, but not so anymore. And of course, I don't have to tell anyone about Ruby Motion. Matt Aminetti spearheaded this project. And all the awesome sauce he learned, he created another awesome sauce known Ruby Motion. So most of what you see here, except for some of the Xcode stuff, will definitely translate to Ruby Motion in terms of how you're writing code. Uh, but yeah. And so first thing we're going to do, get the funk. You're going to download it. The best thing to do is download either a night. I, I like to do the nightlies because they're actually fairly stable in my opinion. Um, uh, but get it off the website, install it. And then when you create a new macro, uh, when you go to Xcode and create a new project, you'll actually have a MacRuby application template. And uh, you're pretty much good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start building the app. I know I have limited time, so I'm going to try my best to rush through. There's going to be a lot of code, but I'm going to open source the project right here on stage, right after I'm done. So take a look at it um, at your leisure later. So basically, there's an rb main.rb. Basically, it's your main um, C app in Ruby. And you really don't have to touch it at all, except when you're including frameworks. In our case, we are going to touch it. And we're just going to require AV Foundation framework, which is a, a core Apple framework used for, AV, for audio video stuff. So after we've done that, let's try to get basically a preview and, a, and all, of, all of our initialization stuff pretty much out of the way. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get, so basically when you have a, a desktop app in the Mac Ruby and in Coco, you have a, a delegate that gets called uh, application did finish launching. And that's basically where you want to do most of your boilerplate setup stuff. So in our case, we're going to actually initialize a capture session, uh, a device, which is going to grab the actual camera on your MacBooks or iMacs. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to give it a width and height. And as you can see here, um, we're using AV Capture Session Preset 640 by 480. So things like that used to throw me off when I started with Mac Ruby. Because I'm writing in Ruby, but I'm still referring to a lot of camel case methods and a lot of camel case constants. You have to get used to that. And honestly, you'll, it's not as much of a pain as you think it would be. And it's even more nice because when you are actually referring to Coco Docs, that's what you're going to be looking at. So you don't, it's a little bit of a mindset to get used to, but it's not too complicated. So once we do that, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to set up an input device uh, with a device input. And one thing to note here, I'm setting the error object here. So it's, um, we're kind of using the 1.9 key value notation um, for uh, hashes. So that should be pretty straightforward. And then we also have to detect, we have to basically have an AV capture uh, output data object. So that's not our preview that we're going to show, but we just need to get that data. So we're going to uh, call that output. And then we're going to add both our session input and output and set those uh, just like so. Again, you're going to have to get used to calling camel case methods uh, on Ruby objects. <laughs> Next thing we do is we are actually going to, in code, we're going to create a new view layer. And we're going to actually set the width and height for it. But more importantly, we have to add it as the last part. The part here is the thing that I think um, has definitely thrown a lot of people, not just in Mac Ruby, but in Cocoa in general. You have to um, add the sub layer. And that's the part like, oh, I have a preview layer. I've 
tell it to do this stuff, I put a video session on it, or I put something else under a picture or whatever, but it's not showing. You have to make sure that your camera preview object is actually in there and you're uh, properly adding the sublayer for it. Yep, five minutes, all right. We're gonna start the session and we have a session going. And now we're gonna use Grand Central Dispatch, which is this awesome library that Coca gives you for basically uh, queuing stuff. And uh, we're gonna do it in a very, we're gonna use it in a very light way. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, uh, we're, we're gonna do sample the video output buffers using GCD. And it's very simple and they've matched the APIs really, really well. So we create a new dispatch queue and call a camera queue and then set the delegate, which is responsible for knowing what's going on, to uh, our app delegate class right here. And then we're gonna do some face detection. Basically, Core Image gives us face detection features and each has an NS point, basically an X and Y value. There are only really three things that they're doing right now, left eye, right eye, and a, and a mouth. And hopefully there'll be more stuff later on. So we create a CI detector, which is a Core Image detector class, and we give it some low level accuracy, which is again a constant um, in, uh, in the framework. And then we implement the delegate, which uh, basically this is gonna get triggered every single time uh, a frame is uh, buffered. So when you do capture, cap and you have to, another thing that you have to be careful as uh, Ruby is that I definitely had trouble with, is you have to make sure the method signature is exactly the way it is in the doc. So you have to, uh, if it's not, it will many times fail silently and you won't see what's going on. Um, so we're gonna get the sample image and here we basically have features, and there we go, we just add face and we're done. I'm leaving that as an exercise to you guys when you check out the code later, but I'll show you a demonstration of it at the end. So basically, at that point, we have our face detection features that we can do stuff with. And So face recognition is actually very hard. I tried to do, I was really hoping to implement a face recognition algorithm um, in Mac Ruby, but Ruby has a problem and I really need this to be solved. There are no decent linear algebra libraries in Ruby, which definitely would make this pro uh, possible. And I really think we should work on this. Uh, there are definitely, it's not terribly hard to do. The good news is that there is a linalg library um, that's pretty good and has a lot of solvers, but it's a little out of date. So we just need to give it a little bit of a push, and I think we'll be, we'll be in good, good shape again. So we're gonna use face.com, which is what I use for my API, uh, for my hack there, basically. Um, and uh, what it does is it provides you an API to do recognition. And so you train against the data set and use your API keys and you're like, okay, here's an image, who is this? And so I actually, we're gonna use a, a Ruby gem in here, which is great about MacRuby. You can use Ruby gems. Just be careful what they're doing underneath. Uh, sometimes it won't work if it's system level stuff. So just be wary of that. And remember, it's, you have to use sudo if you install from the, uh, from the uh, installer. Yep, two minutes. All right, so basically you pass the deployment arguments in Xcode, and that's pretty much it. You set the, uh, I basically created an action that, that, that says take picture, and uh, it will take the picture and do some stuff. So now I'm gonna quickly go to the demo. Da, 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 da. Compiling. Right, and I added a hipstagram filter, so hopefully I'll get bought by Google or Facebook. Uh, a lot of bright light here. So if you can see, I'm actually overlaying the features, a bowler hat and some glasses and a stash. And this is making the face recognition call at face.com. Oh, it didn't find me. Maybe too much light. Ah. Uh, well, you get the picture. Uh, <laughs> last thing, this is what you guys should take away. You will learn Coco and you will, you will learn Objective-C just because you're dealing with those APIs, but there's nothing wrong with it. And this is my quote. I love Ruby and I know that many others love Ruby, but let's not be monogamous. Share the love, be a polygamist. And that's it. <laughs>